Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer from St Matthew and St Luke's in Darlington. My name is Gordon. I am training for ordination with Lindisfarne College of Theology and I'm based here at St Matthew and St Luke's. Wherever you are joining us from, whether it's the first time you've been with us or you've been with us many times before, a very, very warm welcome. I'm keeping the pattern of our worship the same today um, although we will have prayers a little bit later on for the repose of the soul of Prince Philip. Our normal pattern of prayer is we'll have a Bible reading, there'll be a talk and then we'll finish with night prayer. Night prayer is traditionally the final prayer of the day in monastic orders, monks and nuns and people who live in religious communities. All the words will be on the screen for you, so you will be able to join in at home, and I'll explain a little bit more about that when we get to it. So our reading this evening is from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Where do I start this week? My wife thinks that my sermon writing process is inefficient. Normally I would start writing my sermon on a Friday, having spent the week looking at the reading and looking mulling it over. I might look at some commentaries. If I've done a sermon on this be passage before, I'll maybe go and look and see what I've said in the past. And this gives me a bit of room to ensure that whilst it's finished in time for Sunday, I have still have some time and space to respond to any big events that happen, things that need to be mentioned, things that need to be talked about. This Friday I was about to start writing about St Thomas, about the doubt and faith exhibited within him. When a bigger event than I anticipated happened, the death of Prince Philip. Now I think 
if we are honest, and I'm speaking personally here, the royal family are one of those things that divide us as a country. Not in the same way that milk or tea in the cup goes first, because there's only one right way of looking at that, and if you've got the wrong way, you can get in the sea. But this is more on the uh, spectrum of ardent monarchists at one end, ardent republicans at the other, and the middle group, which I quite suspect are the largest, the, oh yeah, we've got a monarchy, don't we? Because I think for a lot of people, they do not spend their time wondering or worrying over who is head of state. They're far more interested and far more worried about is the bus going to turn up on time to take me to work? Do I have enough money in my bank to pay the bills? What am I going to have for my tea tonight? And so it's interesting to look on social media on Friday afternoon and see how lines were being drawn. There were the people that I would expect who were expressing grief as if they had personally lost a parent. And there were others who were sharing sometimes inappropriate jokes. I would expect all of that to happen. There were others, however, that were normally very firmly in the oh yeah group, or even nominal Republicans, who suddenly took on the mantle of ardent monarchists. People will deal with death and in mourning in different and impersonal ways. I certainly do not want to give the impression that there is a right or a wrong way of mourning. Now earlier societies recognised the inevitability of death and it was treated as a normal part of everyday life. In the 16th and 17th centuries what were known as bills of mortality were published and these were a weekly list of how people had died that week how many had died, of what cause. And these make fascinating readings. Sometimes it will be something like fell down the stairs. Sometimes it will just say wolf. Others it will say plague. One person actually died once of lethargy. They were so lethargic that they just died. In Victorian Britain, the high rates of infant mortality meant that only the serious delu seriously deluded would be unaware of or untouched by death. I would argue, however, that as a nation, we now shy away from death, preferring, preferring to treat it clinically as far away as possible, with medics and funeral directors picking up the majority of the work. And this view has understandably been reinforced in the last 12 months. In the UK, we have lost over 127,000 people to COVID-19. Many of them far away from their families and friends on secure wards. And lots of people's last memories of their loved one will be confined to a small phone or a computer screen. Every one of those 127,000 people will have been someone's son or daughter. They will have had hopes and dreams and someone to mark their passing. They and Prince Philip were all and are precious in the sight of God. Now I spoke last week about how we can feel as if we've been given a different script to the rest of the world when it comes to Easter. In retail, Easter is well and truly over as they prepare for the seemingly inevitable carnage of people fighting over pants and t-shirts in Primani tomorrow. Our supermarkets are now devoid of eggs, chicks and bunnies with Easter decorations packed away making way for summer barbecue stuff. In church, however, 
we will continue to celebrate the resurrection of Pen until Pentecost Sunday in May. There is a sense of grief and despair in society. But there's not much hope in resurrection or eternal life. And this is entirely natural as we live in a society that thinks it knows that people don't come back from the dead. St Thomas, I think, would find himself well and truly at home in our society. I think St Thomas often gets a bad rap with being a doubting Thomas seen as a negative thing. I have sympathy with Thomas and I think that if we were in the same situation as him we would have a similar reaction. Just think of it for a second. If a group of your closest friends all told you that they had seen something fantastical, something so out of the ordinary to be from the realms of fantasy or science fiction, would you believe them if they hadn't seen the same thing? Like the majority of us, Thomas needs certainty. He needs to put his hands in Jesus' wounds and see for himself. Thomas isn't being swayed by popular opinion. He wants to make his own mind up. He still belongs to the group and he is still accepted and loved by them. St Thomas's doubt allows him to challenge the groupthink and the orthodoxy. And this can be an uncomfortable position to find yourself in, but certainly wouldn't be the last one Thomas found himself in. Legend records that he journeyed off into I India, where he was martyred in about the year 72 in Chennai. But Thomas didn't have to wait long for his proof in the resurrection of Jesus. The very next week, he is in the same room with the other apostles when Jesus comes to him again. Now St John doesn't tell us if Thomas physically touched Jesus' wounds. However, he sees with his own eyes and he comes to believe in the resurrection, a belief which provides the climax for all of John's narrative when Jesus proclaims that Jesus is my Lord and my God. And in John's Gospel, that is the first time that John has a human being confirm Jesus' divine nature. When Jesus breathes on the apostles at the beginning of his story, he gives them life in the same way that God gives life in Genesis chapter 2 verse 6. In that Genesis um, creation myth, God creates and forms the first human being out of clay and then breathes life into its nostrils. And today we receive that same breath through the gift of the Holy Spirit, that divine wind which hovered over the creation in Genesis chapter 1. And just as Thomas recognised the divine nature in Jesus, it's up to us here and now to recognise the divine in other people. Now we may not want to see this divine nature in some people, other people may want to hide it, but ultimately we are all children of God. And because we are all children of God, God loves us all equally without exception. God loves us all equally. And this makes it life a lot, lot harder for Christians. It would be so much easier if God had favourites. If we could divide ourselves into those who were favoured and those who were damned. If there was a clearly marked group of people we could look down our noses at in disdain. But God doesn't work like this. God's love is for all of us. If only we would care to look for it or allow others to see it in us. Remember the words of St Paul to the Galatians. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. 
during his earthly ministry, Jesus took a firm view on those who set themselves up as moral arbiters in society, those who somehow saw it as their divine right to judge others. COVID-19 has been a massive opportunity to assess where we want to go not just as a church but as a nation and as a world we have a clear choice ahead of us do we love one another do we recognize our common humanity and welcome in those who society may shun do we follow thomas and recognize the divine nature alive and active in the world do we want to build a church and a world built on justice and of peace and of love? Or do we simply want to scurry back to our safety nets of division and hatred? I know which choice I would make. What about you? Amen. And so we come to our time of night prayer. As you can see, all the words are on the screen for you. And if you could say the words that are in yellow. So may the Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So as we come to the end of another day, another week. We bring those days and weeks to God and recognise his presence with us now. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Alleluia. So we come to our Compline hymn. <coughs> if you know the tune, please feel free to join in at home. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep from evil dreams defend our sight from fears and terrors of the night tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no sinful thought may know O Father that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. The psalm set for this evening is part of Psalm 104. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You appoint the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness that it may be night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep forth. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. 
the lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they are gone to lay themselves down in their dens. People go forth to their work and to their labour until the evening. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The sea is full of your creatures. There is the sea, spread far and wide, and there move creatures beyond number, both small and great. There go the ships, and there is that leviathan, which you have made to play in the deep. All of these look to you, to give them their food in due season. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. When you give it them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die and return again to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure for ever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Creator God, send your Holy Spirit to renew this living world, that the whole creation in its groaning and striving may know your living purpose, and come to reflect your glory, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to St. John. The servants of the Lamb shall see the face of God, whose name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for God will be their light, and they will reign for ever and ever. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. As he promised to you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. As he promised to you. Alleluia. Alleluia. And so we come to our time of prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have promised to hear us when we pray to you in faith. We pray for the world in which we live. We pray for those who are working for peace. We pray for those troops who are on peacekeeping missions and tonight we pray for the people of Northern Ireland
We pray that the peace process may hold. We pray for all who are working for peace within Northern Ireland. In particular, we pray for the community at Corrymeela. We pray for our country. We pray for those businesses who are preparing to reopen tomorrow. We pray for those who will work in our shops. We pray for our schools as they prepare to go back tomorrow after the Easter holidays. We pray for all who are in particular need tonight. For those ill at home or in hospital. For all who will care for them. Our prayers are particularly asked for Mark and Michelle. pray for any known only to ourselves. We pray for all who mourn. Particularly those who are mourning the passing of Prince Philip. We give thanks for his life. We pray for our royal family, especially the Queen, as she prepares to start this new phase in her life. A prayer from the Etherton Orthodox Church for those who have died. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Thou only art immortal, the creator and maker of man, and we are mortal, formed from the dust of the earth, and unto earth shall we return, for so did thou ordain, when thou created me, saying, Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. All we go down to the dust, and weeping over the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Risen Christ, from whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, Open the doors of our hearts, that we may seek the good of others, and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace. To the praise of God the Father. Amen. And I leave a space for you to offer your own prayers to God. If you wish, you may want to type them in the comments below. in Christ, when we have the simple desire to welcome your love, little by little a flame is kindled in the depth of our being. Fueled by the Holy Spirit, this flame of love may be quite faint at first. The amazing thing is that it keeps on burning, 
and when we realise that you love us, the trust of faith becomes our own song. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand, and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May the risen Lord Jesus bless us. May he watch over us and renew us as he renews the whole of creation. May our hearts and lives echo his love. Amen. So I hope you have enjoyed our service this evening. Our next service will be on Tuesday at 10 o'clock when Ruth will be leading uh, morning prayer from the vicarage uh, I hope that you have a good week, I hope you have a safe week and that you will be able to join us again soon.